Greetings everyone, the good tonight here. I haven't updated in a while. If you're wondering why, I was sick again with another fever. So about three months, five, six different fevers. It's whatever, but hey, on the bright side, Splatoon has gummy candies. So like melon soda and like orange soda. And although green is the better color, the orange one does taste better. So that being said, um, a few, uh, few of my buddies were talking to me and they're like, hey man, you should make a video about what it's like working in uh, Okinawa, Japan, because a lot of people are generally curious about what it's like to work in Japan. I know when I was still enlisted, I was looking at videos of people getting jobs as interpreters, and generally the main thing people end up doing is they'll go out and they'll be like, okay, well, I'll work in Japan, I could go teach English, which doesn't require you to speak any Japanese, which tons of people are just all out trying to do, and... I don't know, I guess it's like the, as my buddy would explain, the music industry to me. It's just a bunch of people getting really cutthroat because they want to be the best and the most popular so people buy their product. Well, in this case, you're selling your English speaking and teaching abilities. I don't know. The appeal was never really there for me and didn't really require you to know Japanese anyway. So, meh. The other alternative that most people go for is they go for more of a interpreter position. Or translator. Translator, where you basically when you write all these things. You're, okay, here's this Japanese manga, I go take all this Japanese and make it into English, and you know, okay, well, da, 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 da. super boring, unless you really don't like people, which I guess introverted side, not so bad. Or you do the interpreter thing, where you've got to be a lot more, as it not, in general, words escapes me, but, extroverted, there we go, you know, we're extroverted, you gotta be out there, you gotta be, okay, so, da 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 okay, so he wants, basically, to go get cheeseburgers after work. Is that cool? Yeah, okay, he says it's alright. Cool, yeah, Eh, not bad, but it would be working the old, the old, uh, noggin a few thousand miles per hour, especially Japanese, so. It's fun, so anyway, I ended up, although the interpreter position sounded fun, the hotel position's not bad. Now, the thing about working in Okinawa, or I guess, at least in Japan in general, is that there's going to be a ton of overtime, and the overtime definitely does to suck. I mean, I'm not stuck in an office, thank God. I lose my mind, but... No, it's still at a hotel. The hotel's not so bad. Um, particularly because we do get to work a lot with the military. Now, Okinawa 75% of the military base is only Japan. I mean, get to work a lot with the military, so... As far as the alternative of working on base and everything with the military, you get to work off base with the hotel, and basically make the life of those in the military staying at the hotel exponentially easier, so. That's cool, because otherwise it's like, hey, I need to get a copy of all my stuff for DTS and Defense Travel Service, or whatever the hell the acronym means now. And I need all those documents, and then they tell the Japanese, and they're like, oh, well, I don't know what this is, but. Yeah, so speaking English at a hotel, is very helpful, especially people get here and they're looking for things or all that stuff. So, working at a hotel, well, generally I'm working the afternoon shift, which is generally supposed to be noon to 8.20, but it never works out that way. Almost never, anyway. It's generally noon until oh, 10.20, or 11.20, or 11.50. They generally kick you out before midnight, but still, 12-hour shifts generally on the average, and you get seven days off a week. Well, it doesn't sound too bad, because you go, okay, well, normally weekends, we get you eight days off a week, so, yeah, but now it's going to be all spaced out in random intervals, so you're basically working five days, and then you get a day off, and then you work another five days, then you get a day off, then you work one day, and then you get a day off, then you work, like, two days, and you get, like, two days off, and it's all scattered and all over the place, depending on how busy you are, but, yeah, so that, plus a bunch of overtime, Although for the hotel, it's not too bad. There's a few different things. Generally, either working at the entrance, so you're there. You got your little list of people checking in for the day, and people show up. And generally, like, check-ins at two. You basically take their cart to the front. You're like, okay, hey, they're going to check you in. Front's okay, so yeah, I'm going to wait here, and then I'm going to show you up to your room when you're done. So yeah, Japanese hotel, not too bad. You do need a good deal of Japanese, naturally. Although I would wager that... If you learn the right esoteric terminology off the bat, then the right, you could pick up the rest while you're working, which is generally why hotels, particularly out here, when they're hiring a bunch of people, they, actually when they hire locals too, they start them at the entranceway. 
because all you really need is are you checking in today okay cool i can take your luggage you can park anywhere i'll take you to the front what's your name okay cool got that follow me please and really simple and then you pick up the rest just training on the side or listening and all that good stuff then you get to the front you gotta learn all the computer systems and there's kanji everywhere and once you get the hang of it it's not so bad but yeah working at a hotel i i, I like it it's fun i mostly like getting to work with americans when they come in because america kind of you know objectively the best country in the world not flawless per se but the best but yeah so what else is there so outside of the actual work part i mean if you're in okinawa there's a beach everywhere like i live literally a 10 minute walk from a beach so you can go almost anywhere get to the beach and be like hey it's the beach you know, I get a bunch of people like to get into surfing. Surfing's pretty cool. I've never done it because, well, you know, coral reefs and, well, the ocean in general kind of being the horrifying mass that it is. Just, you know, waiting for its opportunity to know you don't belong there. And then horror movie style it happens. That's why there's so many shark movies. There's way too many goddamn shark movies. Anyway. I digress. So, so that, the yeah, hotel jobs are pretty, generally pretty cool because they have their own kitchen. And when the hotel has a kitchen, that means the kitchen's generally going to cook a bunch of food, which means that once lunch comes around, you don't need to bring your own meal or your own little bento or anything. You go into the kitchen or a little rest area, the jishoku, where all the food goes on. You walk into there and there's just a bunch of food. It's like, hey, have some food. And you're like, okay, I will. And you go, you sit down, you get your food, you get eh. Yeah, yeah, so that's, I think that's only like $2 or 2 or $3 a day they charge you out of your pay, but still for free, free food. And there's also ice cream and other stuff, and generally your goal is not to eat too much to get fat, but to also eat enough to compensate for the potential of overtime that you don't end up starving at the end of the day, so that's fun. And then you get to work with a bunch of people. Especially where the hotel is a bunch of events. You learn about some cool things you never knew were going on in the area. You learn about other stuff that's off the grid, just living in the area and working all the time. And you get to meet a bunch of people and talk to them. Because initially, well, especially while still enlisted, when you're going all over the place and staying in different hotels, okay, you can talk to some of the staff. And people are generally pretty cool, so hotels are fun. And yeah, so there's all that. And it's also a decent hotel, so... It's got a pool and a gym and all that stuff, although we're in, like, the area where the, everything's smaller. Like, the main the main branching resort, or the overarching, I guess we'll call it Mother Building headquarters, is up north. And it's got this massive indoor sports gym, huge pool, all sorts of depths and just crazy stuff. And you can hang out there and party every day. But the downside is it's way up north, and it's kind of in this, we'll call it resort town. There's really no other, uh, no other word for, what was it, own a village or whatever. It's just a resort town. It's a bunch of resorts and people hanging out and enjoying themselves, so. And outside of that, it's just, like, in the middle of nowhere, so. But, yeah, this one's actually in, like, a decent sprawling city with tons of stuff going on and lots of food and all sorts of cool stuff, so. Problem is, with all that cool stuff, there's not a lot of building areas, so the hotel is a little bit tinier than a resort. A bit more built up, and it's still... Still really awesome for what it is, but stop be pain. Awesome for what it is, but there's um yeah, all that stuff and we <sighs> get tired and sleepy and then you have a kid and I'm digressing quite rapidly. Cause I need more coffee. But yeah, so the idea is if you learn enough Japanese, you can come and you can go, Hey, I wanna teach English and everyone's like, nah, you barely speak English as it is and you go, Aw, oh, I have failed in my esoteric esoteric studies and I'll never become the eponious character of my life and people go, Yes. You figured it out. Congratulations to you. So yeah, so if you don't speak well, if you really don't speak good English to begin with, or you can't speak English well, then English teaching is gonna be off the radar and I guess you really can't do anything else from there, so. But if you can't speak good English, and you get a bunch of the Japanese together, then you know all the different, all the different crazy stuff going on, and you could explain all the different situations, and everything goes really well every time. And yeah, but yeah, you're gonna get a bunch of phone calls. And once you have a phone call, like, there's your proficiency in Japanese in person, then your proficiency in Japanese over the phone, where you can't do all your hand gestures, 
oh yeah take this 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 and this and move it over to here and file it like that you can't do that you gotta be like um you're gonna want to take the thing which of course while you're on the phone you're making the hand gestures but no one can see you so have fun with Japanese there occasionally he's like oh yes hold on one second and put him on hold and be like hey swap with me this is I don't know what he wants. I'm slurring just everywhere. Um, no, but yeah, there's no outside the hotel. All the other stuff. Japan has coffee in cans that comes out of vending machines and pools and cool stuff. And there's a few bunch of airsoft fields. Well, more so now than there used to just be one. Not all that long ago. If you watch an older video, I know I was definitely bitching about that. But having more fields is nice. More options. Although they're almost all going on Sundays. There's one field doing Saturday games, so I'll be going out there on the 29th. I finally got a Saturday off. And generally, oh, there's another downside if you're working seven days a week. I guess it's a downside for almost any job, but if there's only games going on weekends, and you can only get like one or two days every month to go play on a weekend, and then when that day comes, either you'll get a nasty fever, or it seems to be my problem, not malingering, like legitimately fevers, like 104, sort of nonsense, like, hmm, maybe I should go to the hospital. But you get a fever, or the more common occurrence, it's just hot and un uncomfortable the entire week, and then your final game day comes, and you wake up in the morning, you go, oh, batteries are charged, guns loaded, I'm gonna go party, and you open the window, and just poof, thunder and torrential downpour. I mean, I've got a gas shotgun, so you can grab my shotgun, and go, okay, we're still gonna play. I've still got this, and you get there, and they're like, yeah, it's muddy, and you know, when it's raining, just like in real life, we kind of all just cancel the war for the day, and we stay home and drink hot cocoa. So yeah, um, there's that, and that tends to happen a lot. Which is why pretty much everyone who plays has been like, man, we really wish we had an indoor airsoft field that we could still play in when the weather was absolutely terrible, but there is none. And Okinawa likes to rain. It could rain anytime, anywhere. It could be a perfectly clear sky, and you could be walking, not having a nice stage. <laughs> For like 25 seconds exactly, torrential downpour, enough to get you soaked and uncomfortable. Then the sun comes back, and then the sun's out, and it just whoosh, evaporates all the water, and then the humidity just spikes, and you're like, ah, oh, I hate my life now. Why do I, why do I do this? Oh, and uh, giant insects. So, giant spiders and moths and all sorts of things. And also a ton of mosquitoes. Fortunately, the mosquitoes are bigger too, which on the which would sound like a bad thing, although if they bite you, it's it's gonna sting, but giant mosquitoes mean they can't sneak up on you as well, so. I'll be there at work, because <laughs> you're at work, you're like, okay, so you had your reservation for two nights, you've got breakfast included, and, um, so what you need to do is go to the restaurant and, gotcha, fucker! Uh, yeah, one less mosquito in the world, but you're generally gonna be covered in bug spray, so if you're one of those people who just starts, like, burning with bug spray, you're probably using it too strong of a bug spray. Like, generally, there's the Japanese bug spray, which barely repels mosquitoes and washes off almost instantaneously if you start sweating. But you can spray that on, and it doesn't really cause a problem. There's no, like, greasy oil or anything. You're just like, oh, okay, cool bug spray. I just feel a little weird. Or you can get the slightly stronger, like, oil-based bug spray that'll stick to your skin and only keep mosquitoes away. And I find that works out best. That's probably your best option right there is, like, off something basic civilian in the city style or then you get like off deeps woods and that's the stuff that like digs into your pores and just starts burning but basically no insect will come near you so but then you're also going to be sweating non-stop and you're going to be terribly uncomfortable and so things to consider especially if you plan to work out in Okinawa I mean I'd if I lived up farther north I'd be torn between uh working at the resort or uh forest adventure park because ziplining is fun so so yeah, this is just pretty much my ramble video, I haven't uploaded in forever, but yeah, I've been sick. I've gone down from like a hundred and, what was it, like 183 pounds, which was only recently, mind you, down to like 176, so. And then before that, it was even higher, so I've just like spiked down in weight, mostly because I'm getting sick. So yeah, diet and exercise. I'm just gonna get a nasty stomach bug and spew your guts out for like a week straight and uh, you'll lose weight. Probably muscle weight, which is sad. So, kettlebell exercise. But I should, I've been able to run faster and do more pull-ups, so. Hey. But yeah, so. 
I'm going to go get some coffee. It was like work in 20 minutes. And um, then I can eat all these delicious Splatoon gummies. Mm, gummy. I guess you can't call them gummy bears because they're Splatoon, but delicious Splatoon candies because I have them. They sell them here, and that's another reason to live in Japan. So if you're not living in Japan, how are you going to get Splatoon candies? So there you go. All the incentive you should need to learn Japanese now is Splatoon candies and I guess curry and taco rice and soba and all the other nonsense. But yeah, mostly Splatoon candy because Splatoon's great. And don't tell me I'm a charlatan. I know I've never played it, but God damn it, but I will. In time. In time. As soon as I get more ducats. Splatoon games. Splatoon games, Splatoon candy. And then I can actually be like, yeah, it's the greatest game ever. So cheers, everyone. I'm going to go drink coffee. I'll see you in the next video. Also, green, objectively greatest color ever, although the orange ones taste better. So, cheers!